Bright Ideas from the Green Chair spotlight Central Wisconsin and the breakthroughs, innovations, and inspirations that make our state a very special place. This program is dedicated to Bob Williams, a lifelong Central Wisconsin resident. From his public relations office in Stevens Point, Bob's bright ideas moved across the geographic, ethnic, economic, cultural, and political landscapes. His genius helped to elect a governor, build businesses, grow medical research, improve patient care, nurture a university, guard the environment, and inspire many to achieve their fullest potential. Like the fast-moving rivers of central Wisconsin, Bob Williams was uninhibited in his presentation of ideas, large and small. This despite a lifelong battle with debilitating polio that, while limiting his physical abilities, never diminished his will to move Wisconsin ever forward. From a well-worn green leather chair in Bob's office, Wisconsin Innovation was created in partnership with some of the state's most respected leaders in politics, business, education, and health care. Prior to his passing, Bob gave his storied green chair to longtime friend, business leader, and philanthropist John Noel. Residing now in John's home office along the Wisconsin River, just outside of Stevens Point, the green chair welcomes yet another generation of bright ideas, high ideals, and strong spirit. Hello, I'm John Lobbs, and I'm here with another edition of Bright Ideas from the Green Chair for Wisconsin Eye, from the home of John and Patty Noel in Plover, Wisconsin, a show which highlights the brightest ideas and people of central Wisconsin. Dr. Frederick Eichmiller, Vice President and Science Officer with Delta Dental of Wisconsin, is our special guest for this edition. Delta Dental, formed originally in the early 1960s, is a not for profit insurance company that is Wisconsin's largest dental insurer. It's headquartered right here in central Wisconsin in Stevens Point, and it's a true believer in Let Us Smile Be Your Guide. Dr. Fred Eichmiller, uh, welcome to the Green Chair. Well, thank you. Thanks for the invitation to be part of the conversation. First, Dr. Fred, tell us more about uh, Delta Dental. How large is the company? Why is it headquartered in Stevens Point? That's, that's an interesting story. Um, Delta Dental of Wisconsin uh, has about 2 million, just over 2 million members um, that have, are part of its plans, all of which either live in Wisconsin or are employed by a company that's headquartered in Wisconsin. Um, the reason why it's in Stevens Point actually is more historical than anything else. Uh, when the Delta companies were first formed uh, back in the late 50s, it was part of the dental profession's response to what it saw as a need for benefit programs for at that time it was organized labor. Um, and as that spread from the west coast inland um, and more states started to pick it up, it was often a dentist in a local area that was one of the leaders that would start the plan up. And that's why a lot of them ended up in towns like Stevens Point because that's where the founder of that plan happened to be. There was a curiosity in my uh, introduction about Delta Dental. It's a not-for-profit insurance company. There aren't many of those. Uh, why nonprofit? And does it make a difference in how Delta Dental operates? Oh, it makes a huge difference. Uh, we're organized under what's called a 501c4, um, which is a, a service benefit corporation uh, that really has a public mission. Um, we don't answer to stockholders. Um, our earnings have to be there for the benefit of the public. Uh, and what that does is it allows us to gear our mission more towards about public benefit also. Um, you know, in our case, our, our primary mission is to improve the oral health of, of, and wellness of all the citizens of Wisconsin. And part of that's through our benefit programs or our plans. Um, but another big part of that is through programs like the one we'll be discussing today. Uh, most insurance companies um, have... Uh, risk management program of, of, of some kind. Uh, so you find them recommending that factory workers wear goggles or earplugs, that uh, factories have use ramps instead of uh, stairs. Um, we've all heard for oral health, 
about flossing and, and, and brushing daily. But Delta's gone a little bit farther. It's, it's really all about kids. Uh, and it's all about the smile. Um, so uh, you made a tremendous commitment at Delta over the past 10 years to a program called Seal a Smile. Can you give us a broad outline of, of that program, what it is, how it's funded, who it's meant to serve, how it works? Our Seal a Smile program is a school-based program that's statewide. And what it does is it provides preventive care for children within those schools. Um, what The way that it's operated um, is that we have generally as dental hygienists who will go into a school um, set up sort of like a mini clinic. Uh, they have portable equipment uh, where they'll go into the school and maybe in a cafeteria or a health room. Uh, that's probably one of the challenges in, in setting up these programs is finding good space. Uh, but then what they're able to do is once they've set this equipment up, uh, they can bring in, in our case for the sealant program, we focus on two and th or second and third graders, and they can bring them out of the classroom into the clinic and then provide certain preventive services, um, things like an oral health screening. Uh, they'll provide oral health education, toothbrushing instructions, um, but they can also provide fluoride treatments and sealants to them at the same time. Uh, so it gives us access uh, to populations that might otherwise have difficulty with, with finding access. Are, are these professionals volunteers? Some of them are volunteers. Um, some of them, uh, these are programs that, that we fund through grants. Um, it's a granted program, and, and the way that it's funded it actually, um, a very interesting part of it, and one of the reasons for its success is that it is a, a public-private collaboration, uh, really. What we've been able to do is the state provides a certain amount of funding for it, and Delta Dental in Wisconsin has agreed to match dollar for dollar that funding. And this is a allowed expansion of the program um, so they can serve a much broader number of schools. The third partner in that leg uh, is Children's Health Alliance. And what they do for us is they actually contract to be able to administer the entire program. There's a lot of details that go into a program like this where you have, oh, in our case, over 1,600 visits to schools across the state. Um, they administer the grants, they collect all the data from the program, they compile the reporting for the program, uh, report back to the Center for Disease Control, uh, what the outcomes are for the program. Um, so it's, it's really critical to have all three parts of this. Um, and this collaboration is, is really what's made this program such a success. Why zero in on children? Well, that's, that's an, another interesting story. Uh, when I first came to Delta Dental in Wisconsin, uh, our charitable arm was just beginning to get involved in, in funding programs, and a lot of those things were um, small sealant programs and in individual schools. And we began to ask ourselves, what could we do that would have the biggest population impact? Um, where, where's the best place to put our money so that we really can impact the health of the population? Uh, when I looked across the evidence, um, we knew that tooth decay was the most common childhood disease uh, from the Surgeon General's report. Um, but also, uh, when you looked at the science, there were two things that really had the biggest impact on childhood tooth decay. Uh, one was community water fluoridation. Uh, Wisconsin already had a very good record in community water fluoridation. We had nearly 90% of the citizens of Wisconsin are somehow uh, exposed to optimally fluoridated water, but the other one was sealants. Um, the evidence was very clear that sealants could reduce first-time tooth decay by 70 to 80 percent. Um, there was also some early evidence um, in a report that the CDC had out um, from actually Wisconsin sealant program, the early years of their sealant program, where they were able to show that you know, for every thousand children that received a sealant, they could avoid nearly 500 cavities. And the return on investment for that was almost $3 in avoided treatment costs for every dollar invested in sealant. So it just made sense that this is where both Delta Dental in Wisconsin and the state of Wisconsin should be putting their money. What are, what are sealants? How do they work? 
Sealants are uh, actually a, a fairly simple, non-invasive procedure. Uh, what they are is a plastic coating that's painted over the chewing surfaces of the back teeth. Um, they work best on permanent teeth, uh, which is why we target, for instance, second and third graders, because this is the age at which their, we'll call their six-year molars first come in. And these teeth have just naturally occurring fissures and grooves in the chewing surfaces and small pits. And what the sealants do is they flow over those and they, they seal them off. Um, so the bacteria can't invade those, those cracks and fissures. Uh, and that's the area where uh, most susceptible to early decay like that. And that's why we're able to reduce that, that first time decay by as much as 70% or more. How pervasive is it? Uh, uh, how many schools, how many counties in the state, how many students? Well, right now we focus on schools where we know that there's the highest need. And one of the ways we do that is we look at what their level of free and reduced lunch uh, eligibility is. And when we first started the program, we were focusing mainly on schools that had 50% or more free and reduced lunch eligibility. As we were able to expand into more and more schools, um, we're now down to where we're looking, or we're including schools that have 35% or more uh, free and reduced lunch eligibility. Uh, but even at that, uh, we're in about 50% of those schools that would be eligible for the program. Um, you know, each year, there are about 70,000 children that are screened. Um, or re and receive preventive services, and out of that 70,000, about 30,000 receive the sealants on their on their six-year molars. How do you measure success in this program? And one of the reasons why this program has been successful is the fact that we collect an awful lot of data connected to it. Um, one of the other programs that we funded over the last few years has been a software system that we call Dentaseal. Uh, where we actually um, solicit the help of uh, Marshfield Clinic and their information technology through their research foundation. And we were able to develop a computerized registry that now that the state actually uses um, to track every child that receives a sealant. And by being able to do that, we can look at how the program itself is progressing and how successful it is by looking at things like how many children have urgent needs, how many children have teeth with decay that haven't been treated yet, or how many may have, have had fillings, how many receive sealants. Um, and it tells us how well the program's been running. The better measure, though, is one that's more population-oriented, and that's what the state does every year through the Department of Health Services and what they call the third grade health survey. And in this survey, they, have, they randomly select students in schools, uh, third graders, and go in and actually do oral examinations. And they measure things like how many of those children have sealants, and how many of those children have urgent dental needs, or how many of them have untreated tooth decay. And it's by looking at that data that we can see what this program success has on overall population health. And we've seen things like the, the um, untreated tooth decay drop by nearly half. It's gone from, I think, 31% down to about 18%. Uh, but more importantly, what we've seen is that now, when they do those surveys, the most recent one, um, they found that 70% of our third graders now have sealants on their teeth. And that's higher than, I think, any other program in the country. Um, it's more than two times what for instance, the federal government set as, a, as the goal for their Healthy People 2020. Uh, so we know we've been very successful at getting sealants out there into, into those third graders. Well, now after about uh, 20 years of study here and Delta Dental's involvement, uh, deep involvement for the last 10 years, where does Wisconsin stand on this program? On this program, I think we can say we probably have the one of the best in, and we're recognized as having one of the best sealant programs in the country and we're very proud of that. Um, we know we have a long way to go. Um, as I mentioned, we're only in half of the schools we'd like to be in. Uh, we know that we need to increase the number of children participating within those schools. We also see that we need to perhaps find ways to intervene earlier. Um, what we're seeing is that by the time these children are in third grade, they may already have a pretty strong history of disease. It would be much nicer to be able to intervene when they're younger. And so we're looking at programs 
you know, can we connect with Head Start programs, um, well child visits, things like that, so that we can begin to intervene earlier. Um, so those are the directions that, that we're looking. Um, you know, we also know we have a lot of other work to do around access. Um, we, we still have some big problems with access in, in Wisconsin. We've been able to greatly improve the health of our children, uh, but we know, for instance, that our elderly are still struggling to find care. Our Medicaid rates are some of the lowest in the country. Um, that's inhibiting a lot of access. Um, so uh, there are still many things to do. Well, with Delta Dental's success here, uh, you've now moved on to uh, exploring another type of uh, uh, program, a bright idea, in conjunction with uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs. Right here in, in Portage County, uh, you've started a program, uh, the first of its kind, for free uh, dental care. Uh, not surprisingly, it's called the Smile Club. <laughs> Tell us about the Smile Club at the Boys and Girls sure. Club. One of the challenges, uh, actually the Smile Club was, was really born out of our sealant program. Because one of the challenges we have in our sealant program is that when we deal with second and third graders, we, we're able to get sealants on those six-year molars, uh, which is very important. Between the ages 12 and 14, children erupt what are called the 12-year molars, which have the same susceptibility to decay. But you can't access those children the same way. They're not in an individual classroom. They're in middle schools um, where you have to pull them out of multiple classes. And the logistics are much more difficult. So we were looking for where are populations where we might be able to access those children of middle school age. And the idea came up the Boys and Girls Club may be one of them. Um, so here in Stevens Point, when they were going through a facility expansion, uh, we built a dental center within that expanded facility uh, where they can do the oral health education and the brushing instructions, but they can also deliver a lot of the same services that we deliver through our school-based sealant program, but now across all the ages of those children. So in that program at the Boys and Girls Clubs, and, and I've been to the one here in, in Stevens Point, it's a, a wonderful dentist's office. It, it really looks terrific. But a, after the screening and the fluoride treatment, maybe sealants, uh, what if something uh, more serious is diagnosed? You've got a cavity, you need a filling, you need a crown. What happens then? Well, it's handled a lot like it is in our sealant program. In our sealant program, when we see urgent needs, we make sure that there's a referral that's followed up for that individual child. Um, in the program that we have here in Stevens Point, we've been very fortunate and we have some local dentists who have also agreed to take those referrals. And so we can refer them on. Um, if that child happens to be uninsured, we also have some other funding sources that we can tap to, to help pay for some of that care. Um, but that's been a critical part of both of these programs is we want to make sure that when we see needs, we can address those needs also. You've made a similar commitment um, in the Madison area. Uh, are you, uh, tell me about where that project is in the Madison area, but, but also do you have plans for expanding this uh, um, with the Boys and Girls Clubs in other parts of the state? Well, in the Madison area, that program is just beginning to finish its planning stages. And, and, and um, at this point, it's a partnership uh, between More, More Smiles Wisconsin, which is a, uh, a safety net clinic uh, that happens to be in, in the Madison area, and the Boys and Girls Club there the, of, of Madison. Um, and what they want to do is to try to pretty much emulate what we found is successful in our Stevens Point program. And what we're hoping is that we can then build it piece by piece like that. Once we see success in one club, uh, we can start it in another club, and that club uh, will become an example for another club. And hopefully this is one way that we can address bringing care to those populations in need. Uh, and, and is the treatment done on a volunteer basis by the professionals? The dentists are coming in on a volunteer basis. Um, very often the care they deliver is on a volunteer basis. Uh, in some cases, the, the hygienist that uh, may be a paid position, a part-time position that comes in, um, because we need to, one of the keys that we found to success of these programs is to really have continuity with an administrator, um, someone that, that can run and make sure that that program uh, runs continuously and is, uh, and is successful. Uh, and very often that's the hygienist.
the dental hygienist that's, that's part of that program. I would, I would imagine that even operating at the Boys and the Girls Clubs, you need a permission slip. Oh, absolutely. Uh, is there a problem getting that at the Boys and Girls Clubs? That's not even as tightly controlled as a school. No, it's, it, I, it has some of the same struggles that we see in, in the school settings. Um, but what we do find is the, is the oral health education component of it. Um, we get very good participation in that. Um, you know, we have the brushing sessions with the kids and things. Um, so the kids are, are getting a learning experience there that they wouldn't otherwise get. The, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, other possible future outreaches like Head Start. What about working with Head Start and other youth programs? Well, Head Start is one potential program. Uh, we have tried to work a little bit in the past. Logistically, it's been a little more difficult. Um, one area of opportunity that we've seen, though, is in the medical well child visits. Um, recently, um, dental hygienists in the state of Wisconsin can now work through primary care facilities. Um, they were, their scope of operation was, was broadened as to where they could practice. Um, and so now we're looking at models where dental hygienists are working side by side with physicians um, and being able to deliver that same oral health education and a lot of the, the, the guidance for that new mother um, and some preventive care uh, alongside the pediatrician. Delta Dental, Wisconsin's largest health, uh, dental insurer, headquartered right here in Stevens Point uh, in central Wisconsin, standing as a guardian to everyone's uh, smiles with programs such as Seal a Smile and the Smile Club with the Boys and Girls Clubs. Bright ideas, certainly worthy of the green chair. Dr. Fred Eichmiller, thank you for helping us tell the story of Delta Dental. Uh, and best, uh, best wishes in your efforts to uh, uh, keep us all smiling. Well, thank you. I'm John Lobbs uh, for Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Bright Ideas from the Green Chair. And please look forward as we do to our next edition of Bright Ideas from the Green Chair.